Hey there guys, Music Fan here again. How you guys doing? Uh, we're going to go to a quick review of, of U2's uh, ninth studio album titled Pop, released in 1997. Um, it's going to be a quick review. I did a few uh, attempts at this before, you know, but um, I felt it could have been done better, so I'm going to try it again with these next two videos. So uh, let's get into this. Um, so yeah, Pop is it's like at least before no line on the horizon this is an album that will really divide the youtube fan base in such a way that hasn't been so since rattle and hum at least in my opinion this album is, is certainly the one of the most divisive albums or at least was one of the most divisive albums in youtube's catalog and really this album um is really the apex of youtube's uh, experimentation that started around with octum baby and then ended up around uh, this particular album. Like, and this is also U2's most dance-oriented album in their catalog. I mean, all these tracks from Discotech, Do You Feel Loved, Mofo, Last Night on Earth, Gone, Miami, Please. Like all these tracks, even the even the tracks that don't sound really dancey, they still have kind of a little bit of a dance vibe to them. Especially the latter portion, the latter half of this album, and uh, really. This is, also, this is also U2's most rhythmic, most funky, and, and their funky, and their most their most danciest album ever. Also, their most sample heavy. Like I mean, you catch a lot of different samples throughout throughout this whole album. Like Disco Text, Disco Tech has full of samples. Do you Do you feel loved? Also has a little bit of samples. Mofo has a ton of samples, um, as well as if God was sending his angels. All these tracks have at least a, a certain sample behind it that the band used to kind of uh, impulse a sense of rhythm throughout all the tracks of this album. And uh, really, this is the height of U2's 90s experimentation. This is the height of U2's fond fondness, since Octoon Baby, really, for dance. Or, come to think of it, this is an album that finds U2 fully embracing club culture all, all, some of these tracks especially the first three tracks of this LP really emits a sense of club culture that the band really tried to make music that was for dancing that was for the clubs um, I know especially discotheque was a popular club choice throughout the, the shelf life of this particular track at least throughout the latter portion of the 90s um, but yeah and, but at the same time though like since its, it's release uh, this album has quite uh, gotten quite a bit of a flack from the YouTube fan base, especially the years following this particular album release. Um, really, pretty, really much the band really tried to complete this album uh, by the time they booked their Pop Mart tour. But by the time the rehearsals was was supposed to start, the band was still not finished with their with this album, and they used what they was supposed to have been their rehearsal time for finishing the record and as a result the first few shows of the Pop Mart tour suffered immensely as a result of of that and really this album musically sounds really all over the place while at the same time each of these tracks kind of have an identity of their own like I mean with with Zuropa and especially Octoon Baby you kind of had a bit of a musical theme a musical motif running through all those albums this one though was a little bit harder to swallow considering that it tried to, to be so many things at once with each and every single individual track off this album and uh, it's not the, the most representative of U2 as the, the general public, the wider general public know of U2 um, they know U2 from Boy, from War, from Joshua Tree All You Can't Leave Behind, you know, that's the albums that they know them by but the funny thing with this album is that it's gotten, it's gotten quite a little bit of um, praise over the years and a cult following has developed as a, as a result of, of over the years that have gone by. There's been, this album has kind of had a turnaround over the last few years with fans even going so far as to praise this as U2's best ever album in their whole disco discography. And certainly this album has a lot of great moments. and. Uh, at one point, I really, I also didn't didn't like this album much either because I thought, especially with the track "Last Night on Earth," I thought was was kind of shabby and thought it was so messy and all over the place. But as the years went by, 
that song in particular with the rest of this whole album has really grown on me and I really have learned to appreciate this album and it's it's bigger ambitious musical aesthetic here um, with this album I mean and the, the tracks here especially with discotheque being one of the most underrated tracks in their catalog at least in my opinion uh, as well as do you feel love and mofo just especially mofo just being a just fantastic great dance tracks off this album amongst you two's most awesome songs and some of the most underrated in my opinion you also have tracks like if god will send his angels which is a very slower uh paced song with a lot of these heavily hip-hop samplings all around sprinkled throughout this track um you also have tracks like miami that kind of exuberates a very trip-hop feel to it like with miami um on this, that particular track you know you also have like a lounge song with the track if you wear that if you wear that velvet dress um really this whole album lyrically exuberates it's, it's almost like a conversation in a way it's almost like a conversation with god in a way it's a conversation of between the believer and god himself well um while at the same time it's an album that is, is definitely not really preachy at all. Um, the track Mofo especially having a really unique poetic moment, a dialogue between with, with Bono and his mother, Iris Houston. is another tribute to Iris Houston with Mofo. And uh, especially in the middle portion, half of that particular track. Um, the darkest track on here is being Wake Up Dead Man, which really is a track about wondering where God is, where the person needed most. And um, this track is kind of reminds me of Numb from Zeropa as being a track that really kind of has all these different samplings th sprinkled throughout this whole track. But at the same time, um, it's, a, it's a track that kind of really is raw and really confessional in a way. And it ends it out. Bono has once described this album as being an album that begins at a party and yet ends at a funeral. Discotheque being the party, but and uh, Wake Up Dead Man being the funeral. It's def Wake Up Dead Man is definitely a a dark song. Is probably one of the darkest songs in U2's catalog, um, in their discography. One of the darkest songs, and and uh, really, my favorite track here would have to be, um, well, actually three tracks here. Rather, the first three tracks are amazing they're awesome like i mean the discotheque especially is one of the most underrated because it's so full-on the whole dance aesthetic that the, the the club aesthetic that the band was trying to go for here and I, I, I definitely get a really dancey vibe from hearing this track you know and i definitely love it 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 and uh at the same time though i can get i can understand the can understand the sentiment of those who otherwise would not really really warm up to this album in particular because the band was trying to work was trying to understand a concept a concept with this album uh, like a concept that using club culture a dance aesthetic to amplify the rock band um, a lot of these tracks even though they take a dance aesthetic they, they, these tracks apart from the first three uh, really are not dance songs in the, in the tr traditional sense like no break beats no dance e equipment or technology or anything it's just it's still a technological album but played from a rock band it's 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 an album that really finds you to embracing a dance aesthetic while not becoming dance artists per se with 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 this album with the tracks off this album and uh um yeah, I mean, like, I mean, the, the, the latter portion of, of these songs especially head down a dark route. Um, I mean, I mean, the Playboy Mansion is an interesting track in the sense that it, it, it's really kind of a tongue-in-cheek on materialism and a tongue-in-cheek song about consumerist culture and how we view uh, a, a consumerist culture as we would view religious... Um, uh, 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 religious figures or religious um, sentiments in that particular sense. I know I didn't sound like I made sense, but that's what I get with with that, this track, the Playboy Mansion. Um, 
really like if I have a least favorite track on this album it would be if you wear that velvet dress it's a nice little track I like it you know and it's a good little little loungy kind of song you just want to you know lay down and just kind of sit around and have something good in the background but it's not it's not my favorite on this album nor is it my favorite in U2's catalog in general it's nice but it's a song that I really don't warm up to all that much Either way though, this album has really ranked amongst the fan base as being one of U2's worst albums to one of U2's most underrated albums in their catalog, surprisingly enough. And this tr this album really um, has U2 reaching the apex of the European experimentation with this particular album. And uh, really an album that um, e that almost reaches the zenith of U2's ideas for these songs but but is very close these songs had they had more time and had they had more direction would have been more amazing more fantastic than how they ended up on this record but either way I used to hate this album a lot I really did used to despise this album with a passion but over the years I've grown to kind of really appreci appreciate this album on its own merits not really comparing this with any of U2's earlier work uh, per se, you know, but still this album is pretty underrated. It's, it's an album that I think doesn't get a mu uh, enough appreciation. It's had, it has gotten a little more appreciation over the years, but it's, it's a fantastic album. And while I would not rank this album amongst my favorites, this album is still a great U2 album. It's, it's, it's an album that really reveals things slowly as you listen to them over the years. It certainly has happened with me. And if I would give a rating to this album, I would give it a 4.5 out of 5. It really is not amongst their best, but it's really an album that, you know, had a lot of things going for it, but couldn't really reach its full potential by the release date. Now, certainly they had a lot of trouble with release dates around the recording of this album. Uh, certainly the band will return to a more, to a more conser conservatively rock approach with the following album but for now 4.5 out of 5 for for pop um, this album is definitely one of the most underrated most underappreciated album in their catalog at least one of their most underappreciated and I I used to hate this album with a passion but now I find myself loving this album a lot it's awesome it's amazing all the songs here are gone last night on earth do you feel loved discotheque mofo if God will send his angels um, Miami, the Playboy Mansion, Please, Wake Up Dead Man. This album is awesome. I definitely like it. And uh, I know there are some people who whose this album doesn't appeal to them. All, you know, fine. Uh, be my guest. Um, in fact, uh, express to me in the comments below uh, what you think of this album. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you not like it? Why or why not? And, uh, this has been my thoughts on U2's pop. Mr. Music Fan, U2, pop, and I will see you guys next time on the next review. Take care and see you later.